So good morning. This morning, I think you have uh, your chanting and meditation, right? So it's very good that you have a very calm and clear mind to listen to the Dhamma talk. Yeah. So today, the talk that is given to me is treading uh, the path as a lay Buddhist, right? So, <coughs> before we start, we should uh, also look into the word. Sounds simple, right? Trading the path as a lay Buddhist, right? So first, we'll start to begin with the word Buddhist. What is a Buddhist? Can you share with me? What do you think is a Buddhist? Can anyone? Follower of the Buddha's teaching. <coughs> what else? Got to think quick all. <laughs> After meditation should be very calm, very quick, uh, uh, very fast. Yeah. What do you think is a Buddhist? Uh, first thing, do you think you are a Buddhist? Oh, very quiet. In the form, yes, huh? Uh, so yet to understand, right? Who or what is a Buddhist, right? All right. Okay. The word Buddhist. I mean, to us in the uh, our time, yeah. Uh, Buddhist when we say oh, Buddhist. Why we are Buddhist? Because when we are born, yeah, your parent put in your what birth certificate, huh? What religion? <laughs> you put that Buddhist. So you uh, grow up by saying you are Buddhist because your birth certificate says so, right? right? So, uh, so you are Buddhist by birth just because your parents put the word Buddhist, right? Then when you grow up, you do not know exactly what Buddhist is all about, right? So for me also, when I was young, when I was young, I also tell people I'm a Buddhist, yeah? So what what is the Buddhist that I'm referring to? Because I grew up in a traditional family. Yeah, my parents, they are mixed. Lah, huh? is it? The nearest that we know about Buddhist or Buddhism, uh, for me, is in our house, we have a topic Kong, we have Kuan Yin, uh, Kuan Yin uh, and then we have uh, ancestor worship. Right? <coughs> and those, we think that's Buddhist. Do you think so? Some of us, right? Yeah, some of us already learned about what the Buddha teach. Then uh, that is still fine, right? And uh, so that was my thought, yeah? And uh, so the nearest of getting to know about Buddhism is uh, the closest connection for Chinese is <coughs> Kuan Yin, right? <coughs> and then the first thing that I know about Buddhism is from the Kung Fu fighting one. Uh, uh, you know, when we are young, we start to watch, uh, you know, TV was very rare at that time. But uh, when we see all the shows of uh, Buddhist monk, right? And then they are always the Shaolin monk. Uh, and uh, <coughs> the exposure of the word Si Pa Lo Han. Right? So I thought that is what Buddhism is all about too. Yeah? So Buddhist monk, they are fighting and trying to protect Buddhism, right? And then they can fly here, fly there, right? With a lot of uh, psychic, yeah? So you see, those are the exposure because we don't have any direct contact or teaching, yeah? <coughs> Until when I was 19, yeah? Then one of my friend, Kampong Mate, eh, asked me to fetch her to see her teacher. Uh, then I uh <coughs> gave her a ride with my motorbike and we went to Mimalan and uh, the place where they have a retreat. Yeah, Of course, at that time, I don't know the word retreat. She just said, you know, she wants to go and meet a teacher, a monk. So I went, and then I saw a monk, yeah, uh, sitting near the stream. Very serene look. Yeah, not only in my mind, so happy, you know, to see a real monk. Because I don't know, we have not seen, but when I was young, there was maybe 30 or 30 over 40 years ago, yeah. So, 
first time I see a monk very serene, very quiet, you know, so very happy. And I see people sitting down quietly. So I asked my friend, what are they doing? Then she sent me meditation. So the word meditation is not so common eh, in the past. So to me, so what is that meditation? Right? <coughs> so these are some of the things I thought all oh, a Buddhist are doing. Yeah? And then when I went to university, I started to find out what Buddhism is all about. So that's how I joined the Buddhist society in UKM, and I started to learn about Buddhism. Right? <coughs> so to most of us, we start our life something like that. Yeah? Uh, what exactly Buddhism is, what being Buddhist is all about, and what is Buddha all about. Yeah? So what we are exposed is a lot uh, of Buddhism. Yeah? Here and there, and then so we thought Buddhism is like this, Buddhism is like that. Yeah? And how come even the, when you look at monks, they are so different uh, type, different attire, different rituals, different practice. So sometimes you say, I'm quite confused. Right? So which is which that I should follow? Which is which is should I practice? Yeah? <coughs> In a nutshell, yeah, the Buddha has very clearly uh, taught us, yeah, which we can find out. I mean, in our era, we are very fortunate because now uh, information are uh, uploaded and people can get access to it. Uh, then, of course, uh, again, we have to also uh, know where to access because there are so many again. Eh? So, <coughs> but uh, simply, we can refer to the early teaching. Yeah. So, being a Buddhist, yeah, in the past, when during the Buddha's time, how people become modern term we say Buddhist, uh, huh? when the Buddha give a uh, uh, <coughs> talk yeah, on the Dhamma, on the truth. Yeah? After listening to the teaching, uh, they become very inspired, very delighted their heart. And there's transformation of uh, how one can live uh, a happier and uh, <coughs> more fruitful life. Yeah? And uh, so after the uh, talk, they will declare, yeah? Oh, Venerable Sir, you know, may I from now, yeah, become your follower for the rest of my life. So then they become a Buddhist, right? So it's after listening to something great, something very touching, something that brings about the transformation of their mind, then they declare to become a Buddhist, yeah? <coughs> so, and some they say, I'll be your disciple, please accept me, yeah? So they renounce their life. Huh? So when I say Buddhist to us in our modern term, <coughs> yeah, those who are monastic who are also lay, right? Yeah. So in the Buddha's time, uh, what the Buddha has started is that four four assemblies. Yeah, meaning uh, those who are in the Sangha, meaning the bhikkhu, yeah, the full fully ordained monk, yeah, who observed two hundred twenty seven precepts. And then the bhikkhuni, <coughs> they are also fully ordained. They observe 311 precepts. And they are upasaka. Upasaka means the lay male uh, followers. Yeah? They normally observe five precepts. And upasata, new moon, full moon, they will observe eight precepts. Right? And then upasika, the female lay uh, devotees, they also observe five precepts and full moon new moon they also observe the eight precepts <coughs> so they lead a life uh, following the path that the Buddha shown right so these are the uh, group of practitioner so uh, <coughs> the upasaka and upasika uh, they are lay uh, they are lady they normally wear white color yeah and so if you want to see that kind of scenario you can still see in Sri Lanka Right? The lady devotees uh, they are wearing white color. Yeah? So these are the groups of uh, the, uh, what do you call, the four assemblies that the Buddha uh, mentioned. And to the Buddha, these four assemblies are very important to uh, learn, to practice, and to realize the Dhamma, and also to bring forth this uh, good teaching of the Buddha, the Dhamma, to the people. Uh, to more people. And uh, so when we talk about Buddhists, they say 
in our mind we have these four groups and uh, as a lay Buddhist that is why we talk about the Upasaka and Upasika so what about the rest that who do not know <laughs> the Buddhism or Buddha's teaching uh, so uh, is it those who have not realized is called uh, Putujana the whirling whirling so they are in this samsara whirling means they are still living very mundane and uh, you know facing uh, a lot of challenges of suffering all right so uh, as lay buddhists then of course they are lay form of practice and as monastic they are also monastic way of practice so that's why the buddha said uh, it's good that if you want to practice as a lay then who is the ideal person that they can follow so in the Buddha's time, of course, the Buddha pointed out that is this particular person by the name of Chitta and Hataka. The way of a lay practice, who they should emulate. Eh? So if they are practiced as a monastic, uh, then of course for the monk, they can emulate Venerable Mongalana and Venerable Sariputta. Eh? And for the nuns, of course, they also have their uh, <coughs> icon eh, to emulate. Yeah, practice like uh, Kema and Upalana, Upalawana. Uh, uh, <coughs> so, so all these venerables for those monastic, and uh, for lay they are different, different. Also, icon that we can emulate, right? So now, as a lay practitioner, he said, okay, uh, lay Buddhist. So trading the path. So what path are we trading? What is the word path there that you can define? path to end suffering. What else? Noble Eightfold Path. What else? What path? Theoretically we say all this, eh? but practically also this. But then you reflect, are we trading that path? The path that we are trading in our life as uh, lay people, do you think we are trading that path? If I say, hey, come for retreat, I say, Aaron, I got no time. La. Come for a holiday. What? God damn. Holiday? No time. Only I change your wife. Holiday? Got time, right? Holiday? No time. See or not? Uh, so when you say path, okay, what path are we trading as a lay Buddhist? So of course, as a lay person, yeah, you have family, right? A householder, you have your family, or whether you are single, yeah, you are living a household life, meaning you are still enjoying your sensual pleasure, right? Yeah, and that's why you stay as a lay. Yeah, but having staying uh, in a lay form, let's say. To tread the path, yeah. This path that we are talking is the path to end suffering. That's how you say. So it means the path to liberation from the cycle of suffering, right? And how to tread this path, or th what is this path all about? We said the path that leads to the end of suffering. But what is this path? You also answered noble eightfold path, right? So noble evil path. But the Buddha, before he actually inspire or delight the lay people yeah, to walk this path, he normally talks about the danger of, uh, you know, sense pleasure. Yeah, Because without knowing the danger, you won't let go. <laughs> you still cling to it. right? Without knowing yeah, the little gratification out of sense of pleasure, you will still cling to it. Right? Without knowing the danger, eh, you will definitely cling to it. Yeah. So this is where uh, the Buddha normally starts with you know, how we should overcome yeah, our essential pleasure, and uh, then uh, what is it that entails, you know, the happiness here and now, so they can relate. And uh, if they want more, most people want more, right? <laughs> then the happiness here and hereafter, and the ultimate happiness. Then step by step, the Buddha leads them to their understanding. And from their understanding, then only the Buddha talks about uh, the path that leads to the end. 
and how they can thrive and trade that path uh, to end that cycle. Right? So firstly, we have to also understand as a lay life, you know, what are we actually uh, living for, the purpose of our life. Yeah? So without having uh, understanding about our purpose in life, yeah, and the preciousness of our life, uh, we may just, you know, use our life uh, not in a way that we really look for. Right? So we live life, just like a lot of people will say, you know, waking up, I'm waking up, then go to work, come back from work, uh, sleep, then wake up, go back to work, day by day, same thing. Right? And you ask, what is your purpose of life? A lot of people ponder, they don't know. If we do not know our purpose of life, then where are we heading? We just go round round the cycle, right? Yeah. So, recently one of my you uh, mate came, and she said, now she's already into the fifties. Uh. So she said, I said, I start to realize many things has changed. Yeah. So I said, what things change? So I start to see, death is so prominent. I say, in one month, I lost three friends. Yeah. How they die? He said, one is celebrating 30 years uh, working in the company. So, Golden Award. In the afternoon, a telephone call came that the husband uh, rushed, was rushed into the hospital. They were celebrating, okay. So, the wife said, okay, after this, I will come. Then, the next thing, after the celebration, go to the hospital. That night, the husband just passed away. Okay? So, that is one case, is it? Another case, another, is it, friends or colleague? Doctor suspects something to ask him to uh, just go and check. Yeah? But when he went for the checking, he died there. Third case, also very sudden, she said. So, in one month, three cases. I see them, the next moment, they are gone. And I say, now this also, I can't retain my attention so well. I say, what you are going through is very simple. What the Buddha told us about huh? aging, death, right? sickness and death. Yeah? When we are young, we always have the pride. Yeah? The pride of what? The pride of youth. Huh? That we are still remain young, right? We also have the pride of health. When we're healthy, healthy doesn't mean you're really healthy. Eh? Healthy now, eh, people think that you still walk around, you're still healthy. <laughs> you don't like, you know, bedridden. Eh? You're wa walking around, <laughs> but they think that's called healthy. Eh? Then the next moment is gone. Yeah. So the pride of health means we are still walking about and moving about. You think you're still healthy. Yeah. But the Buddha said, don't have pride of health. When you have pride of health, Again, you do not know what kind of suffering you are going through. Yeah? And also we have the pride of life. Yeah? We hear every day in a newspaper or our friends, colleagues or whoever. We always hear about that. But we have not thought that one day it will come to us. Right? Somebody died? Oh, yeah, no, huh? somebody died. That's all. Finished story. But the Buddha always asks us to contemplate every day. Uh, life is uncertain, death is certain. It can come to us any time. <coughs> but do we reflect uh, that whatever time that we have now, are we using it uh, on the right way, uh, with the right things to do? Right? So this, these are the things that, you know, when we face it, then only start to shake our uh, the belief that we are going to live a long, long time, you know, nothing can happen to us. Uh, we have done everything to take care of ourselves, our body, that we will never die. Yeah. Behind our mind, these are the things that sometimes, uh, that's where the Buddha said, the pride of life. We think it won't happen to us. Yeah. So we have to check ourselves whether do we still have the pride of youth, the pride of health, or the pride of life. So, 
this is not the beginning of the adventure to know yeah, how we can treat our path as a lay Buddhist. Yeah. As a lay Buddhist, I said, you know, we go through many, many uh, challenges in life because taking care of householder, uh, a lot of things that we have to do. Yeah, and <coughs> how we can lead a uh, household life uh, fruitfully, happily. Yeah, what do we want in life? Actually, like I said the purpose is everyone wants something in life, right? But at the end, it's only one thing. Yeah, from young we say, oh, if I have this, I'll be happy, right? Then you have it, you feel happy for a moment. Then next, they say, if I have uh, something else, I'll be happy. Let's say you are adult, you say, oh, you know, if I have a car, I'll be happy so I can drive to work. Then after they say, oh, if I can have a better salary, then I'll be happy. Then you get, you're happy for a moment, then not happy again. Oh, if I have a house, I'll be happy, right? So, at the end, what do you want? Happy. It's not the house, right? It's not the car, right? It's not the salary, right? But you want happiness. Right? So the Buddha said, <coughs> there are four kinds of happiness uh, that a lay person uh, can uh, experience. So number one is ati sukha. So it means the happiness that one can uh, derive from uh, is when you work diligently, you strive faithfully to work uh, uh, <coughs> with, uh, how do I say it, uh, morally, to obtain your earning. Yeah? So the money that you earn uh, from your sweat, from your hard work, yeah? and that wealth that you gain from uh, is a kind of happiness, isn't it? Suppose you go and work, your boss didn't pay you. Happy or not? <laughs> not happy, right? So this money or wealth that you earn through your sweat, yeah, through your hard work. And uh, having that money, that wealth, you also uh, gain, like, let's say, certain possession. Like you buy your car, you buy your house, right? So your property is also happy because what? You gain it from your own striving, yeah, hard work and your sweat, yeah? So that kind of happiness is a kind of happiness to you, right? And uh, more so uh, when they get bonus, right? Especially near New Year. No bonus, then you're just so not so happy already, right? But you have to learn, uh, yeah? Learn to uh, be happy with what you have uh, earned. And uh, from that earning, you uh, spend in accumulating yeah? some property. But it's, of course, within your means. This is where we say, not you borrow, uh, this is the cash means cash that you have and you spend it to acquire a uh, property or you know that wealth in your bank account you when you think about it you're happy yeah because you earn it righteously second type of uh, happiness that you can gain the Buddha say is from when after you have this wealth uh, this possession you can make good use also yeah uh, for uh, spending to acquire uh, more happiness. Example, you spend for yourself or for your family and uh, then you make good use of it uh, for your <coughs> other pleasure. Like for example, you have better, uh, better <coughs> things to see, uh, you have uh, better sound, uh, and you have uh, all the better, lah, yeah? more pleasurable. So that's why from small TV become big TV, big TV become what? Uh, like theater in your house, right? Yeah. And uh, <coughs> also those uh, uh, sound system, uh, last time maybe a small little speaker, now surround system, or I don't know what kind of system, right? So those kind of happiness you enjoy, lah, you know, from your wealth, then you spend on all this for yourself, for your family, and uh, that kind of happiness you gain. Yeah, and so this is the second type. Eh? The first type, of course, the the idea just now I told you, you know, you earn righteously, and uh, even the thoughts of ah, I have money in my bank account, you feel so happy. Oh, my stock share going up, ah, so happy. Then uh, you think of uh, your whatever your your let's say your business is uh, improving, you also feel happy. Yeah, so those kind of happiness. Yeah, so first is that kind of. Happiness. Second is how you spend your 
uh, well, yeah, and it brings your five sense pleasure, uh, greatest pleasure, and you think that kind of happiness is happiness. Eh? The third kind is uh, what does it? Yeah, ananya uh, sukha. Yeah, this is a happiness come through depthlessness. Yeah, so when you don't have depth, yeah, it's a kind of happiness. Yeah, but in our modern world, I think uh, it's quite challenging because. I think from generation X or Y already, uh, we are already, uh, what do you call, induced uh, with the kind of uh, economy that uh, don't worry, if you don't have, we can lend you, right? So most of people there yeah, landed up in uh, that. But this is uh, former along, uh, this one, not informal one, <laughs> this is former along, means if you don't pay, after you land, then your property become their property, right? So the Buddha said, if you truly seek happiness as a lay person, you also have to seek for this kind of happiness that is depthlessness, yeah, depthlessness. So uh, I still remember when I was working, and uh, I was uh, promoted to become a branch manager already at that time. So I was just driving a Proton Iswara. Right, so one day my senior manager came and talked to me. He said, "Hey, you know, uh, you can afford one, you know, to change your car. Why are you not changing your car?" Right. <coughs> so I asked him. I said, "Why should I change my car? You know, because number one, my car is still okay. No problem. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> mainly, I say, we have to also understand if uh, people come and challenge you like that, maybe you think, yeah, lah." Now I am a branch manager. I am a branch manager, right? And now, yeah, my salary can afford to buy a better car. Yeah. So when you are challenged, I'm sure you're sure you will you will buy a new car, right? But then I reason out to him. I said, I said the purpose of having a car. I said the main thing is, I don't need a car. I said I just need a transport. Yeah. And then secondly, I said, if I change a new car to a better brand or higher brand, yeah, or more expensive. I say, if there's a traffic jam, eh, uh, are you saying my car can be faster than the rest? If yes, then of course I will invest, uh, right? Then after that, I also told him, you know, I already pay off my car, so I can sleep very soundly. I don't have to think about my payment. Yeah, I already paid off already, so I don't have to think. Every day I sleep, uh, I just sleep. Yeah, and then fourth thing is, I say wherever I park my car, I don't have worry one. Uh. If I buy a new car, I will say, oh yo, don't know whether people will take my rim or not, whether people will scratch my glass or not, whether this or not, you know. So I say I don't have worry at all, you know. So then I say last I say, hey, if I buy a new car, would you pay for me? Uh? <laughs> then after that, he never asked me anymore. <laughs> Isn't it how? Uh, happy, it is free from debt. I don't have to think about my debt. All right, I'm free. Uh, so this is happiness, you know, free from debt. No matter say, when you have this, uh, that is happiness. Really, you can sleep very well. Uh. You don't have to think, hey, this man, uh, boss, uh, will come up, uh, pay the salary on time or not. Yeah, you d you don't have to think. Yeah, so this is a kind of happiness that all of us can enjoy. Yeah. And uh, so this is also another point that is also crucial. Nowadays, we say, you know, and the uh, older generation, maybe here also we can uh, see the generation, those baby boomers or Generation X. Uh, we always say, wow, oh, last time our parents, you know, don't give us enough, work so hard, right? So now we thought we should give to our children so they don't have to work so hard. But what we have educated them is that they felt they are entitled, you know. Yeah? And this generation, because of their mindset is such, yeah, they just spend. Yeah? When they just spend, they don't know the art of saving. Yeah? And worse is they are like that. The next generation they educate is what? Not only spend, yeah, they also give them credit card. Use first before owning. That one, I get the money, I spend. This one, uh, spend first. 
yeah, even without having. So now the generation that we have today is very challenging. Even as a lay Buddhist, you have to be aware. Are we trading the right path or are we not trading the right path? Yeah? And children of today, yeah, and especially the generation Z and the late Y means they are thirty plus. Yeah? And uh, some of course uh, the Z one is twenty plus and below. So in Malaysia, yeah, yeah our Bank Nagara also have mentioned, yeah. You know the increase of bankruptcy in Malaysia year by year is increasing and which group are the biggest group they are below 35 see you know? so if we are educating a generation of even Buddhists huh, with this kind of idea what will be the next generation like already in this generation that's why you hear a lot the problems of Along, right? How they ransack the family life, yeah? How they take away life. So all these things we have to know. It's a very simple thing. Happiness that we are seeking, what type of happiness? Are we seeking the right happiness? Because happiness can be so subjective. Huh? People define happiness in different, different ways, right? People can say, oh, if I take drug, then I'll be happy. There are millions of people in U.S. Yeah. addicted to drugs. Uh, so, these are the things that we have to really look into. Yeah. So, one type of happiness, the Buddha said, if you truly want happiness, this is one type of the happiness that we can seek for. Yeah. Happiness, free from that. Right? So, the last type of happiness, the Buddha said, yeah, Anavajasukha. So this Anavajasukha is a happiness that transcends uh, mm, <coughs> not only the money things, yeah, but uh, the understanding of the, the kind of happiness comes from within us. Yeah? Means it's against the kind of uh, current uh, that is around us, but the kind of happiness knowing the Dhamma, uh, the happiness that comes from uh, the uh, the heart, yeah. As you make good use of the belt that you use, but you use it for the wholesomeness of thing, yeah. And you also know uh, the way of the practice to preserve and also to increase, yeah. Your this happiness or your this uh, merit uh, or your wealth uh, by doing the right thing. Yeah. For example, uh, you take refuge in the triple gem, you also observe the precept well, you also ennoble yourself with a better quality, higher state of mind, and uh, also you avoid yourself from doing the wrong thing, whether legally, uh, uh, in the uh, conventional way, or in the spiritual way. Yeah. So this kind of happiness is where we say, uh, as Buddhists, we learn, but we may have to also deepen our understanding towards it. Uh, uh, for example, uh, let's say as a Buddhist, we say we take refuge in the triple gem, right? So what are we taking refuge? Yeah. So every Sunday you come, you know, you start to chant, uh, Namo Tassa, Bhagavato Arahato, Sama, Sambhadasa, right? And do you really relate the homage? And then you say, Budang saranang kachami, damang saranang kachami, sangang saranang kachami, right? You say it three times or more, no? Uh, people say, bosa pu sing le, huh? you say it three times, yes. And then, <laughs> after that, you recite five precepts. Correct or not? Yes. So how many of you can recite huh, without seeing the book? All of you? Oh, very good, huh? Some of you still like that, huh? Uh, so you, you should learn to really recite by heart and know what it is that you're reciting, right? So very important because why? If we don't have the connection from our heart, the conviction, what we do is, we say, Budang saranang gachami, damang saranang gachami, sanggang saranang gachami. What we're saying that we really look forward, uh, look to the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, to be our refuge, means 
our way of life, our way of practice, our way of uh, liberation. Yeah, following their path because it's already uh, how is it? Testimonial is there already. Yeah. So when we say we take refuge in them, we will spend more time, isn't it? To really increase our this quality of our mind, like the Buddha, uh, that is comply with the Dhamma, that is also like the Sangha. But instead, putang sarananga chami what? Handphone sarananga chami, iPad sarananga chami, you know. Uh, so these are the things that you know you you know lah. So what path are we trading? Is it putang sarananga chami? Yeah. So this again, we have to really think. Yeah, in our modern world, we are challenged with so many many things. Uh, not only us. But our children, yeah, too young when we give them, they do not know. So if we don't teach them, yeah, don't uh, guide our children, yeah, the best teacher actually is still the first liner teacher. Who are the first liner teacher to our children? Parents, right? Parents. So if parents do not uh, take their responsibility to guide our children well. Uh, to bring them to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha as a Buddhist, so we will face more and more problems. Why is it so? First thing is that if we do not guide and teach our children, yeah, and we think because now it's so easy technology, right? We are so busy, right? So so young, we already give them the handphone. So. They keep quiet. Uh, they don't disturb you. Uh, so you feel so happy. You can do your work. You can do more and more. Right? But what are you teaching them? You teach them not to communicate with you. Right? So when they grow up, do you think they can communicate with you? When they are young, they can be very obliging. When they're teenage, so sorry. Right? From young, they're already exposed to the, uh, <coughs> the world outside without control. Last time we were young, uh, we also were naive. Uh. Mommy said like that, uh, miss like that. Uh. Daddy said like that, miss like that. Yeah? So um, our mind is very naive, very uh, pure in certain way. Uh, you know? uh, but now, they're exposed with so many things. Yeah? And because why right, there's no screening. If a young child do not learn what is wholesome and unwholesome, and you just put them in that kind of world, yeah, what do you think? Wholesome one more or unwholesome one more? Unwholesome one more, right? Yeah. I shared with some of you before, but I'd like to share with you all again. Recently, I said last uh, two, three months, was in, I think, November. We have our gratitude day for our... Sunday uh, program, uh, ARK program, the parents and the children. So after the gratitude day, uh, there's a bit of time. Sometimes I like to talk to the children to see their work. And I ask these children, uh, what do you do? You know, school holidays coming. And uh, this uh, boy told me, he said, oh, we play game, uh? common? Eh? So I said, oh, what game you play? Where do you get a game? He said, eh, download law, Google law. Uh, YouTube law. Mm. So I said, oh, so what game do you play? He tell me, Nanny. Yeah, I said, huh? Nanny. So how to spell Nanny? N-A-N-N-Y. Okay. Then after that, I said, so what is this game all about? So I said, this game, uh, we have to spot where Nanny is. Because Nanny can actually uh, strike and kill us. So after that, I said, then we shoot lah. Uh. So, you know, after that, we have uh, this camp. He showed me the nanny game. It's like simulation. They bring you into, like, a house. And they told me nanny actually already died one. It's a ghost. Okay? So they make a simulation where you are entering a house, and you either guess, you know, where nanny is and start shooting. You know why people are shooting around? Let's see. Okay? So that is how their mind is, you know, you have to be very suspicious, don't know where, which corner nanny is, and they're going to shoot. So sometimes because you don't know when the nanny is going to shoot you, ma, 
So you got to shoot them first, ma. right? So never mind. So I said, okay. Then after that, suddenly he said, oh, last time is uh, there's another type of uh, game. It's more crazy, she said. So I said, oh, what game is that? Then they said, Momo. Mm. Have you all heard about Momo? Some, yes, some no. Huh? So then I asked him, what is this Momo all about? And he said, Momo, crazy one. Uh, he said, Momo. So I said, why you say he's uh, crazy? He said, this Momo asked us, huh, take a knife and kill your parents. Then, what else? The Momo will tell them, go to the highest building, go to the balcony and jump down. Third, Momo will challenge them to cut their hand. Right? So then, after hearing that, I was like, really shocked. Yeah, I've never heard about this. So I asked him, uh, so what, you, you should not, you know, uh, play this kind of thing. He said, no, I actually scolded the Momo, he said. He was very brave. I said, I scolded the Momo. But the Momo can reply very instantly. All the four letter words, and the Momo said, he will come after him. Then after that, I asked, those children, they said, I said, do you know Momo? They, uh, they said, yes. A few of the children asked, do you know Momo? Yes. Then one child said, one child said, you know, uh, whenever this Momo are also very scary one day, eh? they can hack people's phone one. Eh? They said, my friend, eh? her, her phone get hacked. Means the Momo can appear any time in the phone and tell them again to jump up from the building. So then I, I, after getting this all information, I thank him. Uh. I say, thank you so much for sharing with Venerable. Uh. I ask the parent, do you know Momo? Ask the teacher, do you know Momo? Don't know. So, who is teaching our children now? These are the evil forces out there. So if you don't take the lead, you give birth to this precious human being into this world. And if you don't take the lead, to teach them, to guide them. From very young, you already lose a child. You toil day and night for what? You think to give them the best? Huh? So we got the pond. This is a reality in our even Buddhist circle. Yeah. So these are the things that I was really shocked to know. That you know. So that's why schools, teachers, parents, we all talk about all the worries. But do we take the practice, the step to do what is right? right? Because we thought we don't want to lose to the trend. Yeah? But we lose our children, we lose our loved ones. Yeah? Some people divorce because of handphone also. Yeah. So these are the things that reality. Yeah. So when we say we tread the path, so the Buddha said, as a parents, what should we teach our children? When they behave wrongly, uh, not according to the Dhamma means whether killing, stealing, lying, yeah taking intoxicants yeah, uh, or <coughs> sexual misconduct, we should correct them. Yeah? So how to correct them? People say, monkey see, monkey do. Uh. You've got to do the right thing, then only they will follow. If they don't do, then they will just follow. That's why if the parents sit on the same table for uh, meals, if all the parents with the handphone, children just follow. So it's not the problem with children, you know. But sad enough is generation after generation we just pass that kind of thing over and over and over. That's why what we are facing is that we need to do something. We need to change. We need to practice. Yeah? So then only things can change. Yeah? So that's why I say, when we say, Bodang Saranang Kachami, sincerely. Yeah? Because why? The Buddha already showed us the past. Yeah, the Buddha already get there. And he's telling us. I always tell them, you know, 
when you want to send your children to school, wow, you really survey, you really do a lot of study. Which is the best school? Which is the best teacher? Uh, which is the famous one? I say, well, to tell you, hey, the Buddha <laughs> already is the best. <laughs> Would you send them to Dhamma school? <laughs> yeah. So again, very interesting, right? What we are uh, searching for or looking forward to, but uh, at times we do not do. So how to retain there? How to how to reach there? Yeah. So this is uh, a very important thing. I say, the first liner teacher as parents, as a practitioner, we should practice the way, yeah, the path. Yeah. This is a simple path only. You are aiming for happiness here and now, right? I'm only talking about happiness here and now. Yeah. How do we help ourselves to increase this? Yeah. So the uh, the fourth one, yeah, where we can thrive, yeah, really thrive is first getting ourselves and our children to do so. Right. So the next thing is, like I say, internet is one thing. Secondly is, like I say, as a parent, as a teacher, first line of teacher, we should also remember, we cannot stop technology. And of course, technology is not all bad. We can make good use for very good things, functional things. Yeah? But we have to be very aware, like I say again, about human to human thing. Yeah? Manusa, manusa means our mind can develop. So we can develop also another's mind, our mind and other's mind. If we don't develop it, of course we lose our mind. We are losing already. Uh, last two days, my sister just, uh, you know, casually, we, we talk about all this. I say, you know, ah, yeah, in future, uh, maybe uh, people have to start uh, tuition to do how to write. Because nowadays, everybody uses only one finger. <laughs> Next time, they don't know how to write. You've got to give tuition how to write. <laughs> Isn't it? Next, 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 next generation, they don't know. Yeah, they just, then they'll find, why should we write? When you can just uh, use one finger. <laughs> then they'll find you're all very foolish. <laughs> why should we write? Because only one finger. But when that thing collapses, they become a useless one. <laughs> Cannot do anything. <laughs> you see or not? So, this is where again I say, now we know technology, what they have started? Humanoid. Yeah? Humanoid to become teacher. Yeah? So humanoid, you know, they make the, the program and they install into a robot like human. They dress them like human. Their texture also, they find those material really very soft, very what like human. And they teach. Already, you know, in the West, they, they put a humanoid to teach. Yeah? So these humanoid teach children and they make a survey to the children. Who would you like to teach? Your parent? Your teacher? Or the robot? They give the robot a name. They don't say robot. Lah. They give the robot a name. Oh, or the teacher, this, this robot teacher. Lah. And then uh, what the answer? What do you think is the answer? Robot. Why? Okay. First, they say, okay, robot, huh? you can ask question. Robot can answer you. You ask many times, robot also can answer you. You try to ask your mother a few times. See? You see now, we are human. Eh? We go and develop robot quality in our mind. No kindness. No loving kindness. No patience. Eh? No human quality to live like a human and to train another human. Yeah? And now, the worst part is children are looking at the robot. Why? Uh, not only they can ask many times uh, to learn knowledge, not only that the robot don't scold them, but parents or teacher will scold them, not only that yeah, this robot have these two qualities, but they find the robot is much, much more intelligent than their parent and their teacher. Right. So what are we here for? You give birth to a child, but you make them like a robot. We become our ro robot. Then our children also become like robot. And then the robot become our teacher. Sad, isn't it? So where is our human quality? Where is our humanness? 
So if we as a human do not exercise our human qualities, uh, such as those that the Buddha mentioned, uh, loving kindness, compassion, patience, endurance, uh, uh, joyfulness, to pass on this human quality, we will lose our mind. We will lose our human capacity. What more talking about Nibbana? Even just only as normal kind of you know, life, we already lose to a lot of things. Yeah. So these are the things that uh, should bring some awakening to us to really look into. How Dhamma help us? Yeah. Uh, dhamma is what? Yeah. The word Dhamma. Yeah. That's why they say Dhamma is timeless. Yeah. So Dhamma is which that uphold us from falling into woeful states. Yeah from falling into woeful state. Means when you practice Dhamma, it should bring your mind up, uplift your mind. So what is a type of qualities that felt uplifted? If I say sadness, happiness, can you tell me which? Which one that uplift your mind? Anger, loving, loving. gentleness, harshness, gentleness. Yeah. Boring, alert, you all know, right? No need to go to text, huh? Very direct, right? You know which one can uplift you, which one that pull you down. Yeah? So when we talk about practicing Dhamma, uh, so that's why we say, uh, why we should take refuge in the Triple Gem, uh, practice the five precepts, and then follow the Noble Eightfold Path. Yeah? So these are the path uh, we should know also. If we do not know, yeah, then of course we will fall into suffering. If we do not know the happiness that we are seeking, yeah, what type of happiness we are seeking, yeah, then we may also fall into suffering. For example, if you have, let's say, the happiness from your uh, wealth that you uh, gain yeah, from your work. So if your target is only to get money, to get more wealth, do you think you will rejoice with the happiness? It turns to greed, right? Yeah. So when it turns to greed, you will never have enough. Yeah. First you say, oh, you know, if I have 10,000, uh, 10, I'll be happy. After getting 10,000, not happy. Yeah. Then you say, oh, if I have 1 million, I'll be happy. Already millionaire, but not happy again. Right? So, means you do not, how, do not know how to rejoice with the wealth and how to make good use of the wealth. Yeah? So it means when you have that wealth that you can spend, let us say for all the essential pleasure, uh, but you also have that kind of happiness that you can enjoy that, but at the same time, you know how to make merits. Yeah? So that will help you to connect with the Dhamma. Yeah? So some people, they only know how to enjoy their wealth. Yeah? So they go, they spend you know, for their family, all the pleasures and luxuries. But still they are not happy. Right? So it means what? They do not know how to spend their, this particular wealth into something that help them to increase their happiness through the merits or through dana or generosity uh, and to uh, helping yeah, the Dhamma to grow or more people to listen to the Dhamma and bring happiness to more and more people. Uh, so those are the things. So these are the things that we have to know. First, to know. Yeah? That's what the Buddha said. First, we have to know there is suffering. Yeah? And what is this suffering all about? That's how I mentioned to you all. First is the suffering of that we will grow old, get sick, and die one day. Yeah? And also we see if the uh, familyhood are not properly understood, uh, of why they get into marriage or why they get into this family, then, of course, you know, breaking up is suffering. Right? Yeah? <coughs> Means to lose our loved one. Huh? That's how the sister also shared with me. Uh, somebody thought, you know, I cannot get a good boyfriend to get married, then never mind. I will get a child to raise. How sure we know that that child will take care of you? 
We also see families that when your children grow up, you send them overseas. Ma. So at the end, they say, here is better. They don't come back, right? Still, you have to live by yourself, right? Uh, if your couple still okay, I got partner, one die, then alone. Oh, when they're young, you give them mate. Ah. When you're old, they give you back mate. Ah. Right? So like that. Oh. Right? So these, these are the things. Ah, you know, what you give them, they give you back. Ah. Yeah, but I say, how sure we are when, you know, if uh, you have a family that, uh, that will take care of you? No guarantee. Right? So even you're single, if you don't have purpose in life, again, no guarantee. So you start to feel fearful. Yeah? So the brother said also, you know, uh, if we lead our life again, yeah, I say how we tread as a Buddhist. If we do not know how to lead our life uh, as even a Buddhist, then there are these four things that actually happen to us and happen to animals too. Yeah? What are they? I say sleep, eat, sex, and then have fear. Fear and then they have to strive and they have to fight to sustain their survival. So, these four, all animals do. But human, if they do not know the Dhamma, these are the four things that they do also. Isn't it? But we are born as human, they say, but they say, you know, we have to know we have higher capacity. We are not like animals. But if we don't make good use of our higher capacity to develop the mind eh, for this, uh, to disentangle from this samsaric cycle, then really, you know, we have really missed a very, very rare, very precious chance. Yeah? Because this four is applied to anyone. So if, if a human act like that, so, you know, they just waste a very precious life in this very life. They don't use the capacity of their mind, their intelligence, to do something which is far beyond yeah, that can help them to uh, really ultimately uh, free from that samsaric cycle. So what is that samsaric cycle that we say? Again, birth is suffering, aging is suffering, then sickness is suffering, death is suffering. To be separated from a loved one is suffering. Yeah? And to associate with unloved ones or unpleasant ones is suffering. For example, just now I quote that one. I remember one of my relatives the couple, they don't have children, so they adopt one child. And this child is super hyper and super naughty. So thinking that having a, a child will, you know, uh, sort of like help you, you know, when you are old, it may not. That's what the Buddha said. Uh, in the past, you know, during the Buddha's time, uh, Lady Visaka, you know, huh? very famous lawyer, she got Ten children, a uh, ten boy, ten girls, twenty children, and she enjoy actually, you know, uh, a big family. And apparently, they say her children also have ten, ten. So you can imagine how many, how big is her her family. So one day he went and see, uh, she she went to see the Buddha, and a bit sad. So she told the Buddha, you know, today, you know, one of my grandchild, granddaughter passed away. So she's a bit down. Uh. So then the Buddha asked uh, Lady Visaka, Lady Visaka, you know, the, you know when Savati, uh, the, the householder, have a lot of children, uh, do you enjoy that? He said, yes. Then the Buddha asked, him, uh, asked her again, uh, but Lady Visaka, in Savati, uh, do people die every day? He said, yes, Lord, sometimes ten, sometimes five, sometimes three, sometimes two, at least got one, I said. Uh, so the brother said, so none is free every day? Got somebody? Is it yes? So <laughs> Lord Buddha asked her again, so Lady Visaka, how many children and grandchildren you have? So we can imagine that uh, has, she has 20 and each of them have 20. Then the brother said, you know, the more you have, the more sorrow you will have. See, you know? The more you have, maybe if you 200, you will have 200 suffering. If you have 100, then you have 100 suffering. If you only have one, okay, one suffering. Have none, no suffering. <laughs> Still got, like, you got your own suffering, right? <laughs> and that you got to work out, okay? So don't think that well, having more is happiness. Huh? 
Uh, that's not the way, eh? The reality is such. And also, I always point out to people, you know, from young, eh, when you give birth to a child, other parents, you can see, the child come with what? Only a body, right? And then a cry to start living. And um, somebody die? We, 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 we put them, the, the, what they call, you put, uh, try to give them to wear the, what they call, the dress or the wear that they like, right? And then what they like to wear, uh, the Rolex or whatever it is. Maybe Rolex you don't put, like you say, after the, somebody may take it. <laughs> but then you put everything that you think that person like it, right? But can they take? Uh, even their bungalow also cannot, right? Their bank accounts also cannot go, right? Yeah. The fact we can see, right? Born, nothing. Naked, go, also nothing. But why during our life, we toil day and night, accumulating those things that cannot follow us? So which one is important, your body or your mind? Isn't it our mind? Yeah. So, we say, but without food also cannot, uh, right? So Chinese got say, uh, uh, right? uh, means money is not uh, everything, but no money also. A lot of things cannot be done. So what we are saying as a householder, we need to earn, earn righteously. But doesn't mean you earn until non-stop one. No day, no night. Yeah? So when you earn no day, no night, what happens is? What happens is what? You say you are very busy. 24 hours not enough. Yeah. When you're too busy, your heart die. That is the Chinese word. Mang, heart die. Okay, so when you're too busy, really your heart dies. Yeah. Really, one of my also devotee he told me he's a strategist. I say three cases also she saw in the office collapse. Forty fifty only. Huh? Oh. So when you're too busy, really the heart dies. On. Yeah, until one day cannot tahan. Then collapse. Yeah. So once collapse, end of story. Right? So these are the things that we have to really again wake up. Yeah. Don't when you are busy you have to reflect. Uh, when you keep telling people I'm busy, some people will say, I'm busy, please don't disturb me, right? Uh, when you say this word, you got to really wake up. Uh, like I say those are strategies. So strategize to die fast, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that one money, you got to pay money one or oh. And that is uh, only a camouflage yeah, to think that we will end up in Nirvana, right? Malaysia also got Nirvana, right? Uh, so only give you a, what, a, a, a dream, you know, for Nirvana. But is that really Nirvana? Hmm? I tell you the story about this Nirvana. There are cases when the family, you know, the father-in-law already bright pot for everyone, uh, the children in the family, to be together even after that, all in Nirvana. Right? Uh, so, what happened? But even the sibling, you know. And then, what happened is, the, after this man died, the wife, no, the wife, was not in good term with the husband's sibling's wife or something like that. So when this man died, the wife told the children, we are not going to go that nirvana, we want to go another place, buy another plot, because we don't want to be neighbor with them. <laughs> that happened, real one, real story. No, so they don't want to go nirvana, because here and now they don't feel happy with each other. Yeah. So is that real nirvana? So these, these are the things that we create, yeah? Trying to emulate happiness. The way we define, yeah? So on and off again, like you say, come back to this, yeah? The practice, yeah? 
So what do we do in order to treat the path? Yeah. So spend time, like we say, you know, every day. Yeah. So three refuge, five precepts, noble effort. Okay. So and you also here, yeah. Uh, <coughs> the the right understanding is very important. That's why the Buddha said, understand about what. The first one is understand there is suffering. So just now I have mentioned few, right? The first four is basically bodily. The second two is basically our association, yeah, our mental uh, unhappiness. Uh, when you separate from your pleasant, uh, pleasant, uh, pleasant one, you feel suffering. When you associate with someone that you don't uh, unpleasant to you, also suffering. Not getting what you want, the Buddha said, also suffering. This is the third for the mental suffering. Meaning, not getting what you want is not just physical things that you want, like say, oh, you dream of a house, you haven't got a house. Suffering, right? But not getting what you want is suffering, the Buddha meant is this. We say, Ayo, since it's so suffering, uh, uh, then I don't want to take rebirth anymore. Can you? Uh, so we have to ask ourselves, not getting what we want. We say, don't want to rebirth, but still, you know, come out to the world. Yeah? Like someone said, uh, there's one incident, this particular baby, when she was born, yeah, the nurse was surprised because the baby can utter things on him. Yeah? Just simple word. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> Come out or rebirth again. <laughs> yeah? Maybe he must be wishing so much now not to take rebirth. Yeah? But after that, the baby don't know how to talk anymore. Just, know, just that statement only. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? So there are babies that come to this world, uh, most of them cry. But there are babies come to this world smiling. Uh. Yeah, these are those who know uh, their purpose of coming to this world again. Right? So, <coughs> uh, uh, the, what they call number seven is uh, <coughs> suffering because why? Uh, not getting what we want. Uh. You would want rebirth but still born. Uh, if you're born as a human, still okay. Lah, you know? But what about other world? Right? Even more suffering, right? Then, second, aging, yeah? Not getting what we want. We don't want to age, but we age, yeah? Isn't it? So that's why we are very scared, yeah? Especially for female. Not only female, male also. Yeah? Female, they will go and dye their hair. Uh, male ones, sometimes they become bald, huh? they become very, uh, uh, how do you say, they, they become also restless, yeah? Because why? They cannot turn with their aging. All right? <coughs> you know, last time, my, my grandpa, when he was 80 plus, he has a little bit of Parkinson. So about two, three times, you know, he loved to like every morning go to the coffee shop and then have a cup of coffee, then you know, meet friends, and then he would come back. So two, three times he actually fell because Parkinson, you know, their movement are not very well coordinated. So one day I say, Grandpa, I get you a tongkat. You know? Yeah. So, my grandpa said, no need. I said, I have one. I said, you know, I'll offer to you. He said, don't want. Then I said, why? Because you fell, you know? I said, it's best, you know, when you can uh, uh, walk with a walking stick. Then you're more stable. If in case anything, you can actually support yourself. He said, don't want. Then, I asked him, why? You know what this is his answer? He said, all oh, my friends also nobody take tongkat. See, old, but see, don't want to acknowledge we are old, the incapability of uh, uh, sustaining the safety of ourselves, but just because we cannot accept that we are getting old. So these are the things, uh, not getting what we want. We don't want to, be, uh, we don't want to grow old, but yet this is the reality we have to grow. So we, as a Buddhist, we learn to understand and accept. Uh, uh, don't go against. The more you go against, the more you spend time with the eye. Uh, the mirror uh, is not for us to look and see. Uh, only look into ourselves to think that we are beautiful, right? Yeah. But the mirror is for us to reflect. Yeah. Uh, if you see one white hair, uh, in the past, you know those uh, kings or you know the wise one, they see one white hair, so they say, okay time to pass on all the properties and all the concerns of the world. Time to cultivate the mind. 
Now we see one white hair. Wow, it's like, you know, uh, big things. Uh. Oh, you got one white hair. Your friend said, hey, you got one white hair. Why wow, you panic already. Yeah. Because why? You cannot accept that we are growing old. You must learn to accept, to understand. So not getting what you want. Yeah. Uh, so getting old, yes, you don't want to accept, but that's suffering. If you accept, at least you know, hey, now is not much time. There's an urgency for me to really practice, look into my mind, uh, purify my mind. Then we'll find peace when the time comes. Right? Instead of fearful. Right? So all these, yeah? first, birth. Uh, not getting what you want means you don't want rebirth, but rebirth comes. You don't want aging, aging comes. You don't want sickness, sickness comes. You don't want death, death comes. Yeah? You don't want to be separated from loved ones, your loved ones uh, leave you. You don't want to associate with the unpleasant one, then the unpleasant one stick to you. Right? So these are all suffering. The Buddha said, wake up. No, I have this right understanding about that is this kind of suffering. Yeah? So the last is because we don't understand. Yeah? Why? So the Buddha said, because why the grasping of the five aggregates is suffering. The grasping of thinking that this body is I, my, mine. Yeah? The feeling that we experience is I, my, mine. Yeah? And the <coughs> perception that we have is I, my, mine. And the mental formation that we have is I, my, mine. And the consciousness that we have is I, my, mine. So because of this clinging, this grasping on this as I, my, mine, that's why we go around suffering. Yeah? So we have to learn to understand this. Yeah? After we know, oh, there is these things, not any kind of things, not say, oh, yeah, I lost my wallet suffering. That is only a small little matter, right? Yeah? But this kind of suffering, if we do not understand, yeah? and the Buddha said, you have to fully understand somehow, you know, not half half, you know. Half half, huh? you still suffer. All right, you must fully understood. Uh, that is the first teaching of the Buddha. Yeah, how the far ascetic uh, attain sotapanna, then later arahant. Uh, the first teaching the Buddha say, uh, we have to walk the noble eightfold path. Right. Then the first is right understanding. Understanding about what about there is suffering. Yeah? Not life is suffering. If life is suffering, nothing can be done. But there is suffering means can be changed. Right? Uh, uh, so, not only there is suffering, we ought to understand there is suffering. We must fully understood there is suffering. Yeah? If we don't fully understood, as I said, we still will get into that. Then, this suffering doesn't just exist the way it is. There's cause to that suffering. Yeah? So why does all this exist? It's because craving. Yeah? If you don't have craving, there's no more rebirth, right? Because we have craving, that's why there's rebirth. Whether that craving is through your eyes, nose, uh, ear, tongue, body, or mind. Yeah? So, there is cause to this suffering. What is the cause? <coughs> craving. Craving for what? Craving for sensual pleasure. Yeah? Eye pleasure, ear pleasure, nose pleasure, tongue pleasure, body pleasure, and mind pleasure also. Uh. So it's craving for sensual pleasure that leads to all this kind of suffering. Right? So the next craving is craving to become, to exist. Yeah? And uh, that's why if you ask a lot of people, you say, uh, how many wish for Nibbana? Very few hands. Because you say, they think, you know, because they use the thought, Nibbana got nothing there. No? <laughs> so they don't want to go Nibbana, they say. Heaven still can enjoy, they say. <laughs> so they want heaven. Isn't it? Because they still don't understand. Yeah? So this is the thing that we have to understand. Yeah? What is the cause of the suffering? Craving for sensual pleasure. Craving to exist. And some, they think that they cannot get all these things. They get so upset. They get so angry. They find life is so uh, useless or you know, no meaning. Then they kill themselves. Craving to <coughs> means non-exist. To be non-exist. But that also cannot solve problem. Worse, they go to hell. Yeah? Even if they are born again, 
their mind is always inclined like, you know, dull. Yeah? Because they are restless about their life because right, they shorten their life. Yeah? So even one day they are born as a human, again their mind is in such a state. Yeah? Right? So cause of suffering, so if you can uh, eradicate the cause of suffering, means less sense pleasure, then less suffering. Uh. Less want to become, less suffering. Uh. Oh? So that's why your son wants to become like the, what, the Korean pop singer. Uh, then the more suffering they have, right? They will clash with you a lot, right? Yeah. So if they have less, no problem. Yeah. So these are the things. Yeah. Uh, the cause of it, if you eradicate the Buddha say, then you have less suffering, right? So not only you have to eradicate all the cause of suffering, but you need to fully eradicate. Yeah. Fully eradicate. So as a Buddhist practitioner, like I say, there's one time during the Buddha's time, this Mahanama went and see the Buddha and said. I said, Venerable Sir, I said, you know, I understand yeah, the Dhamma that the Blessed One taught, thus, uh, uh, greed yeah, is an imperfection that defiles the mind. Yeah? Aversion or anger yeah, is also an imperfection that defiles the mind. Delusion is also an imperfection that defiles the mind. Yeah? Yet, while I understand what Venerable Sir taught us, but when greed yeah, invade my mind, it remains. When you know, <coughs> aversion yeah, arise, yeah, invade my mind, it remains. And when delusion yeah, invade my mind, it remains. So he said, I wonder what is the better of the state that I haven't abandoned that caused this uh, owing to that that my greed, hatred, illusion when they invade my mind, they remain do you experience that too? Oh, you listen to Dhamma talk, right? we feel like we understood, right? but then greed, ha hatred, illusion invade our mind, it remains oh. uh. so he asked the Buddha so what is the state that is unabandoned in me, internally, uh, in me, that I have not uh, abandoned? So the Buddha said, Mahanama, if you have abandoned them, yeah, you won't stay in your lay life, <laughs> enjoying pleasures. Yeah? There is a state that you haven't abandoned, you say. What is that state that you have aban uh, unabandoned in you? that trigger all these things, uh, that your greed, hatred, delusion still remain. So that state is very simple. Yeah? The state that not abandoned that is sensual desires. Sensual desires. So if we have a lot of sensual desires, then you know that, yeah, you seem to know, but you don't really know. Yeah? So these are the states that is important to abandon. And this is the second thing that we will talk about. Right understanding will lead to right thought. If you know the, there is suffering, the cause of the suffering, right? Yeah. So then you must also know the path that leads to the end of suffering. So what is this? When you have this right understanding, then the cause to it is the cause of suffering is what? Craving for sensual pleasure, right? Yeah. So, like I told you just now, if you have 200, 200 suffering. Uh, uh, if you have none, then no suffering. Uh, okay, so this is where right understanding will lead to right thought. So right thought, the first thought is thought of renunciation. Yeah. So we didn't ask all of you to become monks and nuns. Yeah. Uh, but, you see, the Buddha's teaching is very, uh, what do you call, practical, very applicable. So you have a choice to choose, right? Uh, one form of uh, practice which is more expedite, another form which is slower but still possible. So as a lay, okay, so the right thought is to reduce, renounce your sensual desire. That is right thought. Uh. Huh? That is right thought, no? Uh. So right thought got three main characters. Eh? One is to renounce your sensual desire, sensual pleasure. Two, 
Right thought is the thought of metta, loving kindness. Third is the thought of non-cruelty. I say, we are human, so treat each one uh, as humane as possible. Yeah? So these are three right thoughts. So right thoughts, that's why you don't have to think so much, only these three. Yeah? When you have less sensual pleasure thought, ah, you say, I have right thought. When you are more kind, you say loving words, kind words, uh, your thoughts that comes into your mind, it's always like when you think of somebody, it's always good thing about somebody, not the bad things. Then you know that you are having right thoughts. Yeah? But non-cruelty, everything that happens, you know, you kasian, you know, you have this compassion for others to reduce other people's suffering. Then you know you have right thoughts. Yeah? So these are the way that we tread the path. Yeah? First, with right understanding uh, that there is suffering, there's a cause of suffering, there's an end to suffering, one the Buddha said, and the way that leads to the end of suffering, which is the Noble Eightfold Path. So Noble Eightfold Path starts with the first one, having right understanding. Yeah? So from there, it will condition your right thought, and then your right speech. Yeah? So all this, when you say five precepts, right? So right speech is in which precept? Fourth precept. Right? Right speech, yeah? So right speech is in the fourth precept. So again, in our life as a lay Buddhist, do we practice that or not? Yeah, I said, like Mahanama, I said, Lord, you know, I, s I understand what you say. Yeah? This, this, this uh, will lead to this. But then when it invades me, it remains. Why? Because of sensual desire. Yeah? So, but in this, again, when you say right speech, again, you can check in your lay life. Do you speak rightfully? Or do you speak with right speech or not? Or wrong speech, okay. So if you speak with right speech, uh, speech that is good. What are right speech? Speech which is truthful. Speech which is kind, bring harmony. Uh, speech which is gentle, pleasant. Speech which is beneficial. So, for example, like I remember one of my um, one case, my mom told me when my auntie was uh, having quarrel with her mother-in-law, came back to the house, crying. So my mother asked what happened. So my mother, after that, said, ah, you know, you should not come back like that. You know, you have a mother-in-law, you have to stay together in harmony with them. Then say, said, come, I bring you back. So my mom went and bring my auntie go back to the mother-in-law. And when they reached there, my mom told the mother-in-law, I said, so sorry, ah, apology, ah. My this uh, auntie, uh, because from very young, because uh, she lost the mother, so maybe she do not know how to uh, give due respect to the elder. So, sorry first. Second, then my mother told the mother-in-law, you know, my this is in law, she always tell about your goodness and the kindness in helping her this, that, dinner, everything. So then, next, uh, my mother told the mother-in-law, Please forgive her because she's also learning young ma. At the end, okay lor, no problem. Then the mother-in-law will say, Wow, your this uh, what they call sister-in-law, uh, very good, huh? Because why? You bring them harmony. You don't hear, wow, your mother will not do this, uh, your mother will not do that, uh, fight, 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 huh? Then is that right speech? So those speech we have to learn to help people to harmonize, yeah? not to break people, harmonize. Yes, maybe A may do some mistakes, B may do some mistakes, but we have to learn to harmonize. Yeah? Then right speech also, pleasant speech, gentle speech. Yeah? For example, if we say words uh, which we are not careful, we actually harm people. Like some parents, they use very harsh words, like simple words, but harsh. Sometimes it's called their children useless. Don't use such word. You know how big is the impact? Just only one word, useless. That can actually sink deep into the psychology of the mind of the child. And then they will act really useless. Because you say them useless. So they will do everything that you mentioned. Yeah. So all those words you have to be careful. For example, like some people like to scold the word stupid. Also have to be very careful. Uh, 
don't simply use all these words because it's really harsh words. Yeah. So I also share with some last time my, my Rainbow Kids parent, she also shared with me. I say one day she was driving a car and then somebody overshoot her car. And nearly she nearly knocked on a, on the other party's car. So she was a bit angry. Uh. So she starts to score all don't know what word come up from her mouth. I think some of us happened too, right? And, and then the child, seven years old, sitting beside her, look at the mother and say, Mommy ah, four precept ah. <laughs> yeah. They say, I was blown by the people a uh, person in front and also beside me. But then they say I contemplated, yes. I asked my child not to speak wrong speech. But here am I in this situation. I just lost my mind. I speak wrong speech. And luckily, is it, I go to the Dhamma uh, program. My child also go to the Dhamma program. Sometimes I remind her, him. Now he reminded me. So after that, I look at my child. I say, thank you for reminding mommy. Uh, so next time, I'll be more mindful. Right? So don't think only we are adults. Uh, it's authorized to speak wrongly. Uh. Yeah. So also speak righteously uh, with right speech. So wrong speech, harsh speech, don't use. Yeah, because why? It harms you, it harms that person. Yeah, to anybody. So we should encourage each other, yeah, to speak with right speech. Then everything is okay. Yeah. With right thoughts, that's why we have right speech. Why? You see, right thought is thought of renouncing sensual desire, thought of metta, thought of compassion. So from there when you break into speech, then the speech will be talking about uh, uh, <coughs> something that is kind something that helps people to overcome their suffering, something that uh, decreases uh, greed or craving. Yeah? So then they will be able to lead a more happy, comfortable life. Right? So right speech will lead also to your right action. How you act also will be according to that. Right? And then right livelihood. So again, the another happiness, uh, Anavaja Sukha, it's also wholesomeness, how you lead a righteous livelihood, like I say, earn righteously. Yeah? And next is the part where we say bhavana. Bhavana means the cultivation of the mind, uh, where you look into your right effort. Uh, the effort from your state of uh, <coughs> your mind, which is the effort to abandon what is unwholesome yeah, or unskillful, and the effort to uh, develop or cultivate wholesomeness and skillfulness states of mind. Yeah? Then that is where you exercise and you practice on mindfulness. Yeah? That will help you to lead to right mindfulness. Yeah? Right mindfulness, of course, we talk about the Satipatthana. Yeah? How we can be mindful of your body, your feeling, your mind, and the Dhamma. Yeah? And from there, then it will lead you to the kind of joy that springs from your heart, the kind of bliss that springs from your heart, the mind that is pure, uh, that is uh, in a state of upeka. Yeah? So this is where then we can really trade a path that leads to the ultimate happiness. So you have three kinds. One is the one here and now, that is why I share some points with you all. The second one is hereafter. Yeah? When we practice, then if we uh, practice uh, four things that to lead to the hereafter is when we have number one, we will say conviction again, the faith in the Buddha, uh, the triple gem. Second is practice the virtue, the five percent well, uh, and then drive the noble evil path. Uh. Second is the five precepts, virtues. Third is to uh, have generosity, uh, practice generosity. And fourth is the wisdom. Uh, Wisdom to discern what is wholesome, what is unwholesome, what is helpful, what is not helpful, and what should be cultivated and what not to be cultivated. So then, of course, it will lead us to the ultimate one. Huh? So it's not so difficult, right, to trade the path, even as a lay Buddhist. But in our challenge of today's uh, uh, society or technology or economy or whatever you can name it, uh, the Buddhist teaching still is applicable. Huh? Uh, how we can thrive our life uh, as a good Buddhist uh, that can also help ourselves and help others. Alright, so I offer this for your reflection.
and uh, may all of you be well and happy. Would anyone like to ask some questions? We have about five minutes for questions. Can you raise your hands? I pass you the mic. No questions. Then I can reverently the sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. So let us compass on mine. I recall to mine. All a good effort coming together since the morning. We take refuge in the Buddha, the and the Sangha to also recite the good teaching of the Buddha and <coughs> to meditate, to purify the mind with good states, and also to listen to the Dhamma. May all this merit death accrue, continue to be a source of strength, confidence, and your conviction in the Triple Gem, and also your development of the good qualities of loving kindness, compassion, altruistic joy, and equanimity and all the right effort to abandon what is unwholesome and unskillful and to cultivate what is wholesome and skillful for ourselves, our loved ones. So may this merit also be shared with all the <coughs> relatives and friends May they also be blessed with the Triple Gem and be able to come in contact and grow in the Dhamma. We also share this merit with all our benefactors, all our donors, all our providers. May they too be blessed by the Triple Gem and may they grow in the Dhamma and find peace in their mind. We also share this merit with all the devas and Nagas of mighty power, all the Dhamma protectors, all the garden deities, including our own garden deities and the garden deities of the shrine and the surrounding. May they too rejoice in our merit, and in so rejoicing with our merit, continue to protect your well-being and safety, guide you to righteous path, and help you in times of need. May they also work long to protect and prolong the Buddha Dhamma, Buddha Susana, and all the Viharas for a well-being, for a happiness, and for the benefit of the many. And in due time, may they too liberate themselves. Also, we dedicate this merit for the spiritual well-being of your departed relatives, teachers, and friends. May they receive this merit and continue to move on to take Guru Birth in the Guru Ram, and also be able to come in contact with Triple Gem, grow in the Dhamma, and one day too be free from the cycle of Sangsara. With all the merits of your crew also, we well wish that our country and the world be stable and be in harmony. Our rulers and leaders rule and lead righteously. And may there be due season for good weather and good harvest. And may all beings be well and happy. And with all your merits too, may I continue to meet and associate more and more with all the noble righteous Sangha and spiritual friends. So be able to be guided and encouraged to walk the noble path heavily and always be well and happy. Sad. 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 Sad.